Hello everyone, day. welcome to new episode. Today is a special day, Pi Day, and I've prepared a special video involving Pi. We're actually going to investigate a really interesting function. So imagine this, we want a function that tells us, so we plug in, we plug in in that function a number and we want to get the area of the regular polygon with side length 1 that has n sides. So let's take an example. If our n is equal to 5, it means that we want a regular polygon with 5 sides. Like this, this is a pentagon, regular pentagon. A regular polygon means that all the sides are equal in length and also all the angles are equal in measure. So we are interested in the area <clears throat> sorry, in the area of such polygon with side length 1. So every side is 1 unit in length. So what's the area? And we want a formula for any n-sided regular polygon like this. What's the formula by using n? Because we need a generalized formula, we need something that works for any number of sides. And actually this will lead to a really interesting thing so be with just be careful to what happens let's say we have a triangle now we need a point that has the same this is the same distance from all the vertices of that shape and that makes us divide that shape into n equal equal uh, triangles in area so if we have n equal to 3, we have a triangle, so we divide it into 3 triangles because any, any side has a corresponding triangle. We can do the same with the square. So now we have 4 triangles and we can do the same with our pentagon. Now we have 5 triangles. What's the point in doing this? Because we now can divide any shape into triangles so we reduce everything to one shape and now we can try to calculate the area of one such triangle and just multiply it by the number of sides to get the whole area how can we calculate uh, the area of such triangle it's really simple because it actually creates isosceles triangles which have the property that their height lies exactly on the middle of that side. So if we have side length 1 and we have this division, then the base of this right triangle is 0 0.5. So if we are dividing in equal triangles like this, we are also dividing the 360 degrees into uh, n equal angles but we're actually going to use radians so 360 degrees means 2 pi radians sorry 2 pi radians because actually the radians makes us ask how many radiuses fit in an angle like this so for example this is an angle that creates an arc length exactly equal to the radius then this will be one radian and because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius then 2 pi radians is exactly 360 degrees the whole circle okay so let's think about how can we how we can calculate the area of this small triangle in uh, all these situations it's the same because it's a right triangle, its area is simpler to calculate and then we only need to double it to get one big triangle and then multiply it by the number of sides to get a whole area. Okay, so one side has this isosceles triangles which we divided like this. We have a big angle and the small angle is actually just half of that. The big angle will be 2 pi radians divided by the number of sides and this is half the angle so we divide by 2 and it simplifies to pi over n so this is 
the angle this small angle in radians so now we we know that this is 1 so this is 0 0.5 this is the height that we need in order to calculate the area of this right triangle but how can we find it um, we know that this side which opposes the angle over this side is equal to tangent of that angle so 0 0.5 over h that's the ratio is equal to tangent of that angle what's that angle pi over n okay so we can find h h times this is equal to 0 0.5 so um, let's just this will mean that h over 0 0.5 is equal to 1 over tangent of pi over n and uh, h over 0 0.5 is just 2 h is equal to that 1 over that tangent and we can divide by 2 to arrive at the result that our h is 1 over 2 times tangent of pi over n so we found our height now the area of this triangle is just h times 0 0.5 divided by 2 because it's just this um, rectangle divided in half but we actually don't need to divide it by 2 because we want to find out uh, this big triangle because then we can just multiply it with the number of sides so we would need to multiply by 2 again it cancels out so it's just this product to get to give us the whole area of one triangle okay h times 0 0.5 is just h over 2 so we just need to multiply by 2 the denominator so the area of one triangle is 1 over 4 times the tangent of pi over n that means that the area of the whole shape is just n over 4 tangent of pi over n and this is the formula you know what's incredible about this formula well yeah it uses pi but that's kind of trivial because we are using radians for angles we could just use degrees but I prefer uh, radians for complex numbers what complex numbers so uh, first let's just look at this function it would be absurd to ask what's the area of a regular polygon with side length 1 that has 1.5 sides or 6.5 sides because it doesn't make sense how can you have a polygon with a side and a half where all the sides are the same length it would be pretty weird and we you also want the area of that but this formula actually lets us plug in any number no math rule stops us from introducing here even a complex number of the form a plus bi so we can extend it to a complex function but let's first look at the function using real numbers the plot is just magnificent so this is the function and we see that from distance it really looks like a parabola this is really interesting so yeah, as the number of sides increases, the area also increases towards infinity. And we see an, a really intricate structure in the middle. It just It's just infinitely many lines, closer and closer, creating this jungle of lines. It's fascinating. Okay, and we can see that we can find the area of a polygon with 3.5 sides, or even with one side or negative four sides well it's just the same it's symmetrical of over the y-axis okay but where is pi involved here it's a much interest much more interesting thing about pi this parabola that i told you here well ignoring the middle part this parabola here is really 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 co close absurdly close to another function that is a parabola that's x squared over 4 pi and we see that function with another color it just 
perfectly, well not perfectly, but almost perfectly overlaps with the parabola made by the original function. It's actually a tiny, tiny difference. If we zoom in, we can see this. And the difference is bigger at small numbers. But it's still close, really close. And the difference gets smaller as the numbers get bigger. So if you want to use really, really big numbers, you'll get a really accurate result the bigger the numbers get by using this formula if you don't want to complicate with this and big numbers. This gives you the exact answer, this gives you an approximation that gets better as the number increases. So it's really cool that it involves pi and it's kind of expected that it involves pi because when we have really many sides to a regular polygon it starts to approximate the circle but it's still fascinating how it implies pi. And now what if we use complex numbers? So I've made a software that does all the math and plots it onto a graph. And this is how the function looks. Okay, so let me explain. This is the complex plane where every number has a point and the color represents the absolute value of the result. But this is really, really far zoomed out. This is just the parabola, but now circular. So let's zoom in because we see something tiny. It's that intricate structure that's close to the origin. If we zoom in a hundred times, we arrive at 